Okay, we have every time another integral. This one's the integral from zero to one of x to the x dx. Okay, now this one's actually known as the Bernoulli integral, and it's pretty interesting. So let's see what we have here. To start with, we don't really like having tab x as our base and the exponent. This is gonna be a problem. So what I wanna use is this trick where I can take x and rewrite it as e to the ln x. So doing it that way, I can just rewrite the integral, plugging this in and distributing in the exponent so I can write this as e x ln x dx. But now here, this is kind of hard to deal with because it's not just e to the x, we can't really just do the normal thing on this. So what I want to do actually is use power series on this because we know that we can take, for just e to the x, forget about this for now, the power series for this is going to be the sum from n equals zero to infinity of really similar to like geometric series, but we have n factorial in the denominator here. So now here the input is x into this. What I can do is the exact same thing on our problem. And so if we have e x ln x, what I can do is write that as the same thing, sum from n equals zero to infinity. Plugging in this, we're gonna have x ln x to the n over n factorial. And now we'll just take this, put this back into the integral, but what I'll do is I'll split, I'll distribute in the uh, n exponent to these terms separately. But now for my next step, what I wanna do is I actually wanna integrate this thing. What I'm gonna to need to do for that is we need to swap the order of the integral in the series. And now at this point, we're just integrating with respect to x and factorial is just a constant value. So I can take that and we can bring that out front of the integral. And now from here on this integral, what I wanna do is I wanna do a u substitution for ln x. And initially what I did was I just did u equal to ln x. But actually what I wanna do is create a minus sign because later on, I'm gonna to try to use the gamma function on this. So if I just set u equal to minus ln x, I think this is gonna work a little bit better. And then of course, doing that, if we just rearrange this, we have natural log x equals minus u. Solving for x, we have x equal to e to the minus u. Then I'll take a derivative here. So to get the dx value, we just have minus e minus u du. So now let's go ahead and substitute over here. First, evaluating one, natural log of one's just zero. That's gonna give us our upper bound. Then evaluating at zero, Natural log of zero is gonna be happening at minus infinity, but we have a minus in front, this is actually just gonna be infinity. Then for x, we have our value right here, distributing in the n and the exponent, right, this says e to the minus n u. So then this is actually gonna be minus u here. So what I can do is I can break that up, break the minus, separate the minus sign, and do that as a minus one to the n power, and then we'll have u to the n. Then multiply times this dx value, and that's just gonna be minus e minus u du. But then I'll take this minus sign here and we'll use that to flip our bounds in front here. And now I'm realizing I forgot this n factorial that I brought out front. So we have a one over n factorial there, one over n factorial there. Now this minus one to the n, that's also a, um, this is also a constant so I can bring that out front. We'll bring that in right there, get rid of that. But then cleaning this up, we've got the same base here so I can combine those together in one term. In front, we're gonna have this minus one to the n over n factorial. And then I'll have this u to the n here. Then putting these together, I can write this as e to the minus n plus one times u du. But then at this point, we notice that this right here, this is really close to our gamma function. Okay, so we have our formula for the gamma function over here to the right. And again, we just really need this part to be a one if we wanna match this formula. I mean, we need to adjust this n, but really we have e to the minus x here. So we need to do something with that. Well, it's just gonna be a simple substitution. What I'll do here, let's use t because we already used u. So I'll set t equal to n plus one times u. Then let's get a value for u. So u is gonna be just t over n plus one. We'll need that in a minute. And then let's take the derivative. So for du, this is just gonna be one over n plus one dt. So then going ahead with another substitution, we still have this sum out front. Now for the bounds, nothing's gonna change because when you plug in infinity and it's still infinity, you plug zero and it's still zero. So that's gonna be the same. Now, first for this u part, we plug in, we, I'm gonna separate it out because we plug the t in, we're gonna have t to the n. We have, when we plug n plus one in here, we're gonna have, I'm gonna bring it out in front as n plus one to the n, then this part here is just gonna transform down to e minus t, our d is gonna be this, but the n plus one I'm gonna bring out front again and multiply it in with this. So this 
n plus 1 to the n is going to become n plus 1 to the n plus 1, and then we'll have a dt on the end. So this right here is almost set up for us to use gamma function on. The only thing is this exponent here. This, the input's t, we want in this form like t minus 1. Well, all I need to do then to set it up like this, I can write n as n plus 1 minus 1. Then the input's just going to be this. So just using this, what we have here is all just going to be gamma of n plus 1, the input there. So we can just rewrite the sum now. This is going to be minus 1 to the n. Now we have a gamma of n plus 1 here over n factorial times n plus 1 to the n plus 1. But now what we can do here is the gamma function can be related to the factorial. And we have a factorial here in the denominator. The way this is going to work for gamma of t, this can be written as t minus 1 factorial. But then if you have gamma of, let's say here, t plus 1, this is going to be the same thing as t factorial. So this right here, this can be written as n factorial. But doing that, this is just going to cancel out with this. And then we've got our simplified expression. And this is about as simple as I can get it. But let's just write out a few terms to see what's happening. So this is, I can write this as like, I mean, of course, this is 1, but I can write it as 1 over 1 to the 1. And the next term is going to become 1 over 2 to the 2. And because of this minus 1 to the end, we've got the alternating signs. This one's going to become plus 1 over 3 to the 3. And this is going to go on and on like this all the way to infinity. And for this thing, we can actually get a decimal approximation of this answer. It's something like 0 0.783. So we'll just leave it in that form and call it good. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching today. Have a good day.